Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining us for another fun-filled All-American Print Supply webinar. My name is Estevan, and as you may have read from the title description, today we're going to be looking at direct-to-garment printing on sweatshirts. Now, before we dive into it, I do want to mention really quick our brand new loyalty rewards program. If you have not done so already, be sure to head over to aaprintsupplyco.com, register your account, make sure you're logged in, and make your purchases as normal. What will happen is you'll begin to accrue points back on every dollar spent good towards future needs on the website. It's that easy and it's our way of giving back and saying thank you and trying to build a lasting relationship between client and company. Also, if you haven't been to the YouTube channel yet, it's going to be AA Print Supply Co. on YouTube.com. Make sure you head over, tap that red subscribe button, hit that post notification bell so you never miss any of our awesome print related content. We have product tutorials, spotlights, past webinars, and a lot more coming. So once again, that's A Print Supply Co. on YouTube.com, and drop some thumbs up if you enjoy any of our awesome videos. Now, as I said, today we're gonna to be diving into sweatshirt direct-to-garment printing. Now, if you have a DTG printer, if you've been looking at it, you probably have a good idea on how the process goes with printing t-shirts. There's gonna be many parallels between the sweatshirt printing and the t-shirt printing, but we are gonna be making some adjustments to our settings. Now, to compare, the first thing that we do with both processes is going to be our pre-press. This is also the perfect time to adjust our pressure. With the DTG process, we don't really need to be crushing the heck out of these shirts, but we mainly want to have a good even contact. So now, with no pre-treat or ink yet on the shirt, like I said, it's the perfect time to adjust our pressure. Over here, I have my Stahls Hotronics 16x20 Auto Open. Great heat press, great support, even better warranty. We're looking at lifetime protection on the heating element portion of the machine, and Stalls has 24-hour technical support. If you have some questions on Christmas morning, if you need help on New Year's Eve, Easter Sunday, you name it, technical assistance is just a phone call away, and one of the reasons we love to sell these heat press machines. So let's head on over, and we're gonna do a quick pre-press. Now, this is mainly just to smooth out the garment from packaging or storage. There could be wrinkles or even moisture in the fabric. So we're gonna lay those fibers down, give us a nice, smooth, clean surface to print on, and then we're gonna go head over to the pre-treat. So here, I'm hanging the hood, the sleeves, the drawstrings, everything off the lower platen, so I have a nice, smooth contact, and I'm gonna be adjusting my pressure for around a three or four. And again, we don't need crazy force here. We're just gonna be smoothing out and ironing the fibers down. Let's see where we are. Perfect, we're right at four. And this is honestly just a moment. Like I said, we're really just ironing everything down, laying it nice and smooth. That should be good. Beautiful. Over here next to my heat press is the all new Mr. T2 from Ecofreen. If you've been a fan or if you've seen the Mr. T1, we've improved upon it with the Ecofreen company. We are now looking at a two nozzle setup versus the traditional one, which allows me to be more specific with targeting exactly where I want to print. In addition, we also have increased speed settings so you can really dial in the perfect amount of pre-treat without giving too little or without overspraying. I love this machine because of its ease of operation, it's easy to maintain, and I have this handy reference chart here that gives me recommended settings no matter what I'm printing. So here, I'm gonna be taking a look at the hoodie setting, and this is about a medium weight ring spun cotton garment. We're gonna be working with a Smart Text blank, or Smart Blanks, and they're available at aprintsupplyco.com. If you got your printer from All American, you're also going to receive a 20% discount good on all your blanks. And we want to make sure you have something good to print on to pair with your top end digital printing equipment. So I've got my settings here adjusted to a 70, and we're going to be doing what's called a round trip, which is two passes of pre-treat. So I'm going to go ahead and extend this drawer out here, load in my garment. I'm going to be folding the hood underneath. And what I like to do with these long sleeves is fold them in half and then tuck them in the convenient under drawer right here. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And this keeps things from getting bunched or wrinkled and allows them to tuck in nicely under the machine. Same thing with the front portion here. I've got everything nice and loaded in. There we go. Now that I've got all my settings dialed in and I have my garment loaded, we're going to go ahead and hit the start button. Now, I said we're using a level 70. If this had been maybe a regular ring spun cotton t-shirt, I probably would have sprayed this at about a level 20, maybe between 30, depending on my garments. But because it's gonna be much more thick and absorbent than a regular t-shirt, I wanna make sure that I have a good foundation so I can lay my white underbase, my CMYK on top, and get the pro best product possible. 
Now that we've gone ahead and pre-treated the fabric, we have a couple options here. Pre-treat technically just needs to be absorbed by the garment. So I can either set this aside to air dry, or if I'm in a production setting, I'm gonna take this over to my heat press, and then we're gonna get this dried up. Now, because I put so much pre-treat on here to get the perfect print, I'm gonna do what's called the hover step. If you've seen any of my past presentations, you know this is something we like to encourage for our best possible results. What the hover step is gonna allow me to do is dry the wet pre-treat or the wet ink naturally without any contact. So let's take a look right now. I'll show you what I'm talking about. What I'm doing here before I actually close the machine is the hover. And all I'm doing is lowering this heating element nice and close to the wet fabric. Now, the longer the hover, I would say the better, as much as your patience will allow, but you give this about maybe 10 to 30 seconds of hovering. We're gonna just start drying that pre-treat. You may even see some of the steam kind of coming off of the garment. And I would say the longer you can hover, the better for the actual fabric print. I'm gonna go ahead and leave this here. Now, for more information about any of the products or processes, be sure to hit that chat in the Zoom link or visit us at aaprintsupplyco.com. This is going pretty well over here. And this honestly should be a decent hover. Now, before I actually do close down the machine, I wanna make sure that I always protect my heating element from any sort of wet ink, or in this case here, wet pre-treat. I don't want any of that getting onto my heating element or possibly onto my next garment. So what I'm gonna be using here is my thick coated double-sided sheet. And this is gonna act as a layer of protection between the heating element and any wet substance that could be on the garment. It's gonna allow all the temperature to go through and give me a nice dry. Speaking of temperature, I am running my Stahl's Hotronic 1620 Auto Open at about 350 degrees Fahrenheit, and I'll just be changing up the amount of time between presses, depending what step I'm on. We're gonna go ahead and close this down right now. Make sure those drawstring cords are not in the way. Again, I wanna get nice, smooth, even contact. We're gonna give this about half a minute here, and after that, we'll be ready to print. Stay tuned. Now that we've successfully dried our pre-treated black hooded sweatshirt, it's time to start printing. You may recognize my co-star on stage with me. This is North America's number one selling direct-to-garment printer, the Epson SureColor F2100. If you don't know about this printer, make sure you head over to the YouTube. It's aprintsupplyco.com. We got loads of awesome content, but the machine speaks for itself. It's going to be our weapon of choice for our direct-to-garment printing today. And let's get started. Now, Compared to doing a regular t-shirt, we are gonna be adjusting our platen height. Ideally, we want our platen to be as high as possible so that the inkjet spray from the printhead does not get too wide. The closer we are to that printhead spray, the more crisp and detailed our resolution is gonna be on our final print. The lower it is, the farther and wider that spray is gonna get, and we may get some blur or lose some of our distortion. So I'm gonna be trying to send this in at a level three. We'll see if that's gonna be acceptable for the sensor in the machine. With direct to garment printers of the past, a common issue was head strikes. That's where the platen actually makes contact with the printhead, throws off your registration, that's downtime, that's service, that's money. So the machine here is quite sophisticated, and I think direct to garment in general has come a long way. The machines are looking after themselves, such as the automated daily maintenance, which means no regular daily cleaning, as well as that platen height sensor. The F2100 is equipped with a kind of safety mechanism to prevent any head strikes by detecting what is loaded on the garment. If the t-shirt is not perfectly flat or if it's sitting too high, the F2100 is going to recognize this as a potential threat and a possible head strike. The machine's going to yell at you and it's going to ask you to adjust that platen height or possibly just flatten out your t-shirt. Again, I'm going to try and send this in on a level three. We'll see if it accepts the platen height. I'm going to load this on here, managing the center point by judging off of the stitches on my next seams. I got this here. After I've centered my garment on the platen, I'm going to secure this in place with my included hoop. Lock this in right there. I'm going to tuck these sleeves onto the conveyor tray so nothing gets caught or dragged. We're ready to send in the file. Let's see if this gets past the sensor. Okay, that's what I thought might happen. That beeping you're hearing is the printer telling me that the platen height or the garment positioning is too high. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the button that brings the conveyor back out, and we're gonna adjust the platen height. Now, there's a lever on the side of the platen that I'm gonna release downward, 
and then I'm going to move the height adjuster one notch lower. So now we're sitting at about three and a half. I'm going to try and send the job now to see if this will be acceptable. I could drop it all the way down to the highest or the lowest level and it'll print fine. But again, I do want to be as close as possible. So I trip the sensor again. If you're keeping track, that puts me at a three and a half. We're going to go ahead and release that lever once more. And this will put me at about a four. Go ahead and lock it back in. Hoops nice and in place. And I think this time it'll print. Again, guys, this is a safety mechanism to prevent any sort of head strike with the garment. And it's beeping again. So it looks like four and a half is going to be our magic number. Let's go ahead and adjust this one more time here. Drop my lever. There we go. Everything's nice and in place. Press OK to resume. And let's see if this time it works. All right, now if you're keeping track, that's a four and a half. We're going to drop this down to a five right now. And again, this is the way I want you to adjust your platinite in small increments so we can find at what point the printer will accept the garment and start our design. Dropping this in here and press OK. And I think this time it's going to work. There we go. We've bypassed the sensor, we're ready to start printing. I can see the head is already starting to do its bi-directional design. Now, let's talk about the software. What I have here on screen is the Cathari NeoRip software that we like to run all of our prints to get the very best results. You're gonna be looking at an average ink savings of up to 40%, as well as faster data transmission. This is thanks to almost simultaneous ripping and printing. If you got your direct to garment printer from All American Print Supply, or if you've been into any of our past webinars, we could definitely get you set up with a nice demo so you can kind of try this out, see if it's worth it. And if you did get your printer from All American, you can also receive a 30% discount. It's a no brainer and it's a really the best way to bring out what these machines are truly capable of. And I'm talking about complex designs, things like glows, fades, transitions, flames, any kind of gradients. Some of these designs that are a little more difficult or intricate may not be best equipped for the standard RIP software. Again, guys, to bring out the very best, I highly recommend giving the Qatar Neo RIP a shot. For more information on that, you can drop a line in the Zoom chat here. And the design's already coming out amazing. Now, as far as my quality settings, I'm running this on what we call high resolution. This is going to be printing at about a 1200 by 1200 DPI. And for you garment creator users out there, I would only send in my sweatshirts on a level six. What both of those settings are gonna give me is two white underbases. Mind you, I may not need that necessarily on a regular t-shirt, but because this is so thick, so absorbent, and really a whole different animal, I wanna make sure I get my very best, same bold, bright vibrancy. And this is gonna be accomplished by level six in GC, or if you're in the Cathari Neurip software, what we call high resolution. And again, this is approximately a 1200 by 1200 DPI. Mainly what it comes down to is two white underbases versus one. We already got our first white underbase level going, and I think we're starting our second here. Can't wait to show you guys how awesome this machine is going to print. It's that easy, guys. As you can see, it's a very repeatable process. You know how to make t-shirts. It's just minor adjustments here and there in our pre-treating process, our pressure settings, our platen height, and the amount of pre-treat that we're applying. We're going to give this just another moment to wrap up. Make sure you stay tuned. We're going to show you the final product in just a moment. You don't want to miss this. All right, guys, now that we've got our print all completed, we're almost done. It's time to cure. Now, on a sweatshirt with the level that we printed, there's a good amount of ink here. Again, guys, that was two white underbases, nice layer of CMYK on top. So we're going to be drying this a little bit differently. Now, the hover step that we reviewed when we were doing the pre-treat, same thing here. Let me place my sweater back onto the heat press. Now, it's a water-based ink, so by doing the hover step, we're going to start evaporating some of that water portion. Again, we're drying this a little more naturally without the contact. We're going to get the best, most vibrant result possible. We were letting this cool for just a moment, so we shouldn't need to wait too, too long at this step. But again, the longer the hover, the better in my opinion. And this should probably be okay. Now, once again, we're going to be protecting the heating element from this wet ink by using our thick double-sided sheet. So we're just going to go ahead and place this right over the print. And again, we're pressing at about a level four. Now, because of the amount of ink that we have on the garment, I wanna be pressing this for about a total of a minute and a half. Now, if you've seen our past presentations, we like to break up the cure into two actual presses. As I said, it's a water-based ink, and you'll see at the end of the first 45 second timer, when it pops open, it's gonna breathe some of that steam out. 
By doing this, we're preventing that steam from kind of circulating in the garment where it would normally otherwise be trapped. On certain more sensitive fabrics, this could actually scorch the design. So we want to make sure that we're protecting our print, that we work so hard to pre-treat properly, get a gate print on, and this way we can have a final product that we're all happy and proud of. So this is wrapping up here. It's about to pop up. I want you guys to pay attention really quick and you'll see some of this steam. Hopefully that shows up on camera. Oh yeah, look at that. That would normally otherwise be trapped inside of the machine, circulating continuously. Let's go ahead and close this back down. We're gonna give this one more 45 second press. We're doing this at about 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's gonna be approximately a level three or four pressure and wait for this to finish up. But with good settings, there's no reason that our products can't be retail ready out of the heat press. Again, guys, if you do have any questions or you'd like to move forward or discuss this closer with the representative, be sure to drop your contact info or let us know in the Zoom chat so we'll be able to reach out to you. I think we have a contact form in there as well. And after this, we're going to throw it to a brief PowerPoint presentation, just recapping some of these steps so you guys can repeat this at home. And we are almost done over there. And this is going to be dried up and ready to go. Goodness gracious. Let's see it. Now, as always, you do want to exercise caution. Temperatures are going to be above 300 degrees, so everything's going to be a little hot. But I want you guys to see how beautiful this print came out. Look at that detail, all that resolution, that nice bright white. So this is all a sign of good pre-treating, good drying, good platen height selection. And again, the machine let me know what was acceptable. It's one of the great features about the Epson F2100 that'll keep everything running nice and smooth, give us the best print possible, and also look after the internals. Print head is probably the most expensive part internally on the Epson F2100. And with that platen height sensor, it's gonna make sure that we keep it nice and safe. Well, if you guys do have any questions, make sure you drop them in the Zoom chat so we can reach out and go over everything further. Uh, once again, we were pre-treating with our Mr. T2 from Ecofreen, available at aaprintsupplyco.com. My heat press was the Stahls Hotronic 1620 Auto Open, and we got these great, wonderful print thanks to the Cathari NeoRip software. I want to thank everyone so much for taking the time out of your day to register for the presentation, hang out with us while we were showing you how to print, pre-treat, and cure our sweatshirt garments. This can be applied to crew necks, zip ups, and more. We're going to throw it to the PowerPoint presentation. My name is Estevan. We are All American Print Supply. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next time.